Welcome to episode two of Power Play, where we travel the world to explore the hard truths of the energy transition. I'm Paul Browning, a retired energy industry chief executive with a passport stamped by the energy transition. From the rust belt of America to the solar fields of Asia, my career has allowed me to witness the transformative power of energy. Now, as I venture into retirement, Power Play is my platform to travel the world and share unfiltered insights into the energy transition, searching for the hard truths that we have to face in this colossal undertaking of eliminating carbon emissions from our energy sector. So, if you're ready to hear about a real world power play, unsanitized and without spin, here's what's on the plate in this episode. We're going to explore how China's central planners managed to dominate the photovoltaic solar industry with the help of households in Germany and California and the surprising future of coal-fired power generation in China. So let's go. In a world grappling with climate change, China's power generation strategy has an apparent conflict. As the world's leading consumer of coal, China's power sector is synonymous with high carbon emissions. Yet, in a remarkable pivot, it has recently become the global front-runner in deploying renewable energy, especially wind and solar. It's important to understand the history of how this happened if we're going to understand China's plans for the future. China's transformation was catalyzed by two of the Western world's earliest adopters of renewable power, Germany and California. Political leaders in Germany and California decided to be early adopters of wind and solar when they were both still very expensive relative to fossil fuels. Here's a chart that shows what happened in the cases of Germany and China. I'm going to spend a minute on this because it's an important chart to understand. It compares the PV solar installation histories of Germany and China, and also shows how the cost of PV solar installations fell over time. So the horizontal axis is time, the left vertical axis is the share of global installs, and the right vertical axis is the system cost of a PV installation. As you can see from the data, Germany, shown by orange bars, had a very large percentage of the world's installations from 2001 to 2011. And China, shown by green bars, had a very low percentage of installs early on, and then had a very high percentage of installs from 2012 until the present day. And throughout both time periods, the PV system cost fell by more than a factor of 10. The takeaway is that Germany led global installations when they were expensive, and China led installations after they became inexpensive. I haven't shown California on this chart, but they began ramping up in 2006 when California passed the landmark AB32 greenhouse gas reduction bill. So the story is Germany led, California came in next, and China followed. So why did the Germans decide to lead? Well, we have this statement in 2000 from Hermann Scheer of the German parliament when advocating for a ramp up in renewables. We are responsible for this problem of climate change and should not shrug this responsibility by only thinking of ourselves. 14 years later, as the cost of German power was rising, German energy analyst Marcus Steinenberger told the New York Times, indeed, the German people are paying significant money, but in Germany, we can afford this. We're a rich country. It's our gift to the world. And here's a statement in 2006 from Arnold Schwarzenegger when he signed California's Assembly Bill 32. Some have challenged whether AB 32 is good for business. I say unquestionably, it is good for business. Not only are large, well-established businesses, but small businesses that will harness their entrepreneurial spirit to help us achieve our climate goals. And in 2015, from California Governor Jerry Brown, in California, we're not waiting for the future, we're building it. Renewable energy is not a burden, it's an opportunity to create a new economy based on clean energy, to improve our health, and to protect our beautiful planet. In addition to being early adopters to help fight climate change, Germany and California did this with the hope that had proven true in other industries, that early adopters became the manufacturing leaders in new high-growth industries. But neither California nor Germany required PV solar panels to come from their own manufacturers, and Chinese suppliers stepped in. But before I tell the next part of the story, I want to take a minute to share how decision-making happens in China's centrally planned economy. Every five years, the Chinese Communist Party leaders meet to develop a five-year plan. 
That five-year plan is meant to guide the country for the next five years. One of the ways it's implemented is through the country's state-owned enterprises. Chinese state-owned enterprises make up about 40% of China's GDP, and they tend to be top of the food chain kinds of companies like banks, utilities, power grid operators, and national oil companies. Because most other companies do business with these state-owned enterprises, they're a very effective way of deploying the five-year plan throughout the Chinese economy. When I was CEO at GE Thermal Products, we had a joint venture with Harbin Electric, a state-owned Chinese enterprise. I developed a good relationship with one of their senior executives. And shortly after Mr. Wu was promoted to CEO, he told me during a phone call that he wouldn't be able to talk to me for a few months because he was going to party school. Now, my first thought was that he was going someplace like Arizona State University. But what I quickly realized is what this really meant was that along with his promotion, he got an invitation to spend a few months learning how to be a good member of the Chinese Communist Party. Okay, back to China's entry into renewable power markets in Germany and California. In the beginning, Chinese products were inferior in performance, but they made up for it by offering much lower costs. This allowed them to start scaling their manufacturing facilities, and that allowed Chinese providers of factory automation to scale their facilities, lower their costs, and improve their products. At the same time, Chinese companies and universities began to invest heavily in R&D. By scaling production, leveraging domestic advancements in factory automation, and using R&D to improve their products and further reduce costs, China rapidly decreased the cost and enhanced the performance of their PV solar products, outpacing Western competitors and essentially reshaping the global renewable energy landscape. This journey was meticulously charted through China's five-year plans of 2011 and 2016. Then, when renewables started getting really cheap at producing electrical energy compared to fossil fuels, the five-year plan of 2021 significantly boosted China's domestic renewable deployment and for the first time set a target of reaching peak carbon emissions before 2030. In 2023, China's renewable energy installations were greater than those of the United States and the European Union combined. In fact, they were greater than the US, the EU, and the rest of the world combined. And its PV solar products cost about half as much as Western products and performed better. And China dominated the global supply chain for PV solar. By being early adopters of renewables when they are expensive, Californians now pay an average of 29 US cents a kilowatt hour for electricity which is almost twice the U.S. average for the other 49 states. Germans, who were even earlier adopters, pay even more, with their households paying 37 U.S. cents a kilowatt hour. And in China, which waited until renewables got really cheap to start their massive deployment, the average price of household electricity is 7.6 cents per kilowatt hour. But now let's get back to coal. To grasp the interplay between coal and renewables in China, it's crucial to understand the distinction between power grid capacity and power grid energy. Energy is the total amount of electricity produced over a period of time, with no specification of exactly when it was produced. Capacity is the amount of power that can be produced at the instant it's needed to meet demand. So think of it this way. If you own a pizza company and calculate that you can make enough pizzas throughout the year to meet annual demand, that's energy. Capacity is if you can meet demand on Super Bowl Sunday. Both are important. In a power grid that doesn't yet have much energy storage, the expanding deployment of renewables is shifting coal's role from providing baseload energy to providing the capacity to meet peak demand. As a consequence, renewable energy resources are increasingly fulfilling the grid's energy needs, reducing the reliance on coal when the sun is up and the wind is blowing. And yes, China continues to build new coal-fired power plants to meet their ever-increasing need for more capacity. But because renewables are displacing more and more of coal's role as an energy provider, experts are now forecasting a peak in carbon emissions from China's power sector well before 2030 and a decline in emissions thereafter. And to put the differences in context between Chinese and Western PV manufacturers, at about the same time in 2023, the several U.S. manufacturers were announcing massive new 3-gigawatt PV solar factories, 
Longyi Solar, based in Xi'an, announced that they would have a 30 gigawatt factory in operation by the end of 2023, and that they would be manufacturing a new technology called backside contact technology that performs 6 to 10% better than the technology that the Western companies had announced. And they announced they would manufacture the full supply chain of ingots, wafer cells, and modules, whereas the U.S. projects were only planning to manufacture most of them modules, some of them cells and modules. And instead of selling for 25 to 30 cents, which would be where the U.S. products would be, the Chinese products were going to sell for 15 cents a watt. Here's the thing you need to understand. If Longyi had built an identical 3 gigawatt factory in China to the one that was announced in the United States, they could have done it at somewhere between one half and one quarter of the cost of building the same factory in the U.S. But Longyi didn't build the same factory. They built one 10 times bigger. So they also benefited from the economies of scale that came from that. So here's one of the hard truths to take away from this episode of Power Play. The West has lost the supply chain for PV solar to a well-executed game plan of Chinese central planners. Two months after Longyi announced their 30 gigawatt fully integrated factory in China, German project developer Solar Express made a trip to Xi'an, China to sign a three-year PV module supply agreement with Longyi. And Invenergy, a U.S. project developer, signed a joint venture agreement with Longyi to build a 5 gigawatt factory in Patascala, Ohio, that will buy Longyi's Chinese manufactured PV solar cells and do final assembly of them in the new factory in Ohio. China's central planners have a proven recipe for success for energy transition industries identified for growth in the five-year plan. They pair Chinese labor with world-class automation to ensure that no one can beat their labor cost. They combine that with fast-paced product-focused R&D that makes their products perform as well and eventually better than Western competitors. They combine that with policy and regulation that's designed to allow companies to build factories faster and at a fraction of the cost of the West. They give these companies power costs that are some of the lowest in the world, and they use state-owned enterprises to ensure a large enough domestic market to launch their new products. Any clear-eyed Western company or Western policymaker has to understand that this is the competitive landscape of the future in the energy transition. Another hard truth is that this is actually a pretty good example of how the West and China can work together to accomplish something important for the rest of the, en of the energy transition in the world. Even if it didn't happen exactly as planned by the West, the world really does owe a debt of gratitude to Germans and Californians for committing their citizens and their wealthy economies to decades of higher power costs to create the early demand that was necessary for China to scale up their renewable factories. And we should also be congratulating China for capturing that demand, learning how to produce renewable energy for less than the cost of fossil fuel energy for the first time in human history, and then using that new capability to start down the road to affordably decarbonizing their own massive power grid. Think about this. Together, the East and the West have accomplished the first requirement of the energy transition, making zero carbon electricity cheaper than fossil fuel electricity and paving the way for economies around the world to begin to affordably decarbonize their power sectors. And this episode's final hard truth is that while wind and solar can now produce electrical energy for less than the cost of fossil fuels, they haven't done anything to address the role that fossil fuels play in meeting the power grid's capacity requirements. And that's a topic we'll explore in the next episode. These three hard truths set the stage for the next episode of Power Play, where we'll explore how Chinese central planners have set their sights on the next two phases of the energy transition, energy storage and electric vehicles. I'll be releasing episode three on Monday, March 25th at 7 p.m. Eastern, and you'll get a new episode every Monday night after that. Well, that's a wrap on the second episode of Power Play. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions for future topics on my YouTube Power Play channel or in the LinkedIn post that I use to release this episode. I promise that every respectful, serious comment will receive a respectful, serious response. So, let's take a walk together as we continue traveling the world to find the hard truths of the energy transition and witness the unfolding of a new era for humanity and our planet. Let's go.